Hello everyone and welcome to this series on Marketing Cloud APIs. My name is Shibu Abraham. I'm a Salesforce MVP and Marketing Champion and also a big fan of Marketing Automation Programming in Marketing Cloud. Now when I started uh, with learning Marketing Cloud APIs, I felt the documentation was really daunting and, and struggled at first. So I really must thank my like uh, SFMC community gurus like uh, Greg Gifford, uh, Susanna, Elliot, Adam, Jason, Vlad, and many others who have like developed awesome blogs and videos on, on how to work with some of the APIs. Through this video series, I'll try and cover basics on how you can quickly start using the Marketing Cloud APIs for your development needs. Uh, please also note that you will need to have a basic idea of how APIs work and familiar with tools like Postman, SOAP UI, etc. Uh, if you do not have experience working with APIs and Postman, um, I would highly recommend you go through a few tutorials on these first. Um, I will try and include a nice quick one from Valentin in the description if you'd like to check it out. Okay. So um, now let's uh, look at the two main API types that we can use uh, with Marketing Cloud. Uh, the first one is the SOAP API, and this one has been there from the exact target days and supports access to most of the email functionality and related features. Now the SOAP API uses XML structure for its payload. The second one and the more newer one is the REST API. Um, Salesforce has been maintaining and updating the REST API to support most of the new channels and features. The REST API uses JSON and hence it's uh, quite easy to work with and definitely preferred by uh, you know developers whenever possible. Now depending on your use case um, and the objects, method and features um, that you need, uh, you will have to choose the appropriate API, sometimes even both of them. Now, you can also use uh, the OAuth2 authentication for the REST uh, and the SOAP APIs, uh, and we will need an access token which we can uh, get through an auth API call. And we will see how to like you know get this in a future video. Now, let's look at the Salesforce official documentation for the APIs. If you Google Marketing Cloud APIs, it will bring you to this location that you can go to. And here, from here, you can actually navigate to the respective sections you need to go to. And this will be your first point um, where you want to go to when you want to explore a specific uh, Marketing Cloud API. I would highly recommend that you read through this documentation to get a high-level idea. Um, I'll quickly go through like you know, a few key things that you need to know like you know, before you start working with the APIs. Um, so if you click on the subdomain and your tenants endpoints, um, so primarily you will um, end up having three different API endpoints that you need to know. Uh, first one is the auth API, which is not listed here, but we'll definitely see um, you know, how to get that from our install package in our next video. Uh, and the other two are the REST API and the SOAP API endpoints. And these are called tenant-specific endpoints. The reason is because uh, the first part of the URL is appended by, uh, or like probably is starting with a subdomain, uh, which actually refers to your actual marketing cloud org. Earlier it used to be like the stacks, like S1 through S10, but now it's actually been changed uh, to the tenant-specific. So anytime you hear the term tenant-specific endpoints, what it means is like it should have your subdomain uh, at the beginning of that particular URL. Okay, so there's one for auth API, which uh, we will be using for you know getting the access token, uh, and then the, any of the REST API routes, when you want to call it, you have to use the REST API one, uh, and for the SOAP API, you have to use the specific one for SOAP APIs as well. We'll definitely uh, take a look at like you know, where you can get this uh, from your Marketing Cloud org in the next video, uh, and then how would you be using that uh, to access the specific APIs, uh, either the REST or the SOAP, uh, in future videos as well. Now, authentication, uh, like I said, like you can use the uh, auth API to get the access token. Um, and definitely that is supported by both the SOAP and the REST APIs. Uh, for SOAP API, you also have an additional option to use a username and a password, uh, which belongs to a, an API user that you can configure in your Marketing Cloud org. Okay, so now let's quickly look at uh, the documentation uh, for the REST API. So as you can see here, uh, the REST API has like, um, you know, REST reference, which is when I click over here, I can show you that these are the different routes that are available for the REST API. Um, and uh, if you actually uh, look at the top part here, they have actually uh, given different areas that you want to like, you know, 
um, refer to if you want to like specifically uh, get uh, uh, details about like okay how do I uh, interact with Journey Builder um, through APIs. So if you want to like go into details about like what is the API specification if I want to build the journeys etc. Um, how do I do that using the APIs? Uh, there's a detailed documentation here, but they uh, actually refer back to like you know these REST references as well. Uh, a good starting point would be to like definitely go through these to get an idea of like you know what is involved when you want to in, uh, uh, interact with journeys uh, or through mobile connect uh, or the content etc. Right? Uh, but if you directly want to get the actual routes um, you know by the features uh, here, uh, you can directly go to this REST reference uh, and the specific feature. That you want. For, uh, for example, like let's say I want to, um, you know, look at how do I interact with journeys. If I click on interaction, it will show me all the different routes that are available. Uh, for instance, search journeys. Uh, if I scroll down here to interactions, uh, you can see here uh, get interactions. Uh, this is the one that actually retrieves a collection of all the journeys in my org. Uh, if I want to create one, uh, I have to use the post as well. So uh, the REST reference is quite useful here, uh, this particular page, uh, to show you all the different routes available. Now, um, just to give you an idea if you're, you're a beginner to the API world, um, the URL that you see here under each of these features uh, will always start with uh, the tenant-specific REST API endpoint that we saw earlier. Uh, the one that we see here, the REST API one, and we said it's tenant specific. Um, and then the last part of it uh, will actually be changing based on which uh, area or feature that you are actually uh, interacting with. Uh, for instance, if it's asset, it'll like uh, the route will start with asset slash v1. And then depending upon uh, what feature uh, that you're trying to access, like if it's categories, it's asset v1 slash content slash categories, right? And then if it's a, uh, depending on the type of method that you want to use, if it's a get or a post, each one has a different uh, functionality associated with it. Get is more like you know getting uh, information uh, from the uh, from the marketing cloud or through the APIs. Post is more of like when you want to like push some data across uh, through a JSON payload. Okay. Uh, there are also other um, uh, methods available like put uh, for um, uh, put and patch for updating uh, and upsert and then uh, delete as well. Um, so you can see that you know there are multiple methods that are supported uh, across these uh, various routes. So if you need to like uh, figure out the route uh, that you need to specifically use uh, for an API interaction, uh, just make sure like you know you have uh, the initial uh, tenant specific uh, endpoint for the REST API, uh, which is here, uh, followed by uh, the 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 route that is mentioned over here. Uh, like I said, if you want to like you know, get all the journeys, you have to append slash interaction slash v1 slash interactions to the base URL uh, for the REST API. Okay. Uh, do not, you know, append interaction v1 interactions to this one here. Okay. So it's already included. The first part, interaction slash v1, is already included. If you see here, uh, all the the different routes already start with interaction slash v1. Uh, so all you need to do is like whatever is after that v1 is what you need to like append to here. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at how do you actually use the route. Uh, information. So you can click on uh, each of these routes uh, to drill down into some of the details. Uh, for instance, if I want to like um, go and get the details of okay, how do I get a collection of all the journeys, right? When I click on the the get interaction v1 interactions, it will show me two um, uh, main uh, things that I need to know. One is the URL parameters, and the other one is JSON parameters. Now, URL parameters are something that you can use along with the actual URL. They will uh, be in a query string parameter that get appended uh, to the, the API route. Um, and then um, if it's required, it will show as required. If it's not required, it's optional. You can, you can specify one or more of these, okay? JSON parameters, on the other hand, are not on the URL, but it's actually in the payload. So um, if it's um, uh, mainly if it's a post request, uh, or an update request like patch or put, uh, you you would definitely need to have a JSON payload where it actually specifies some data that you need to work with. Uh, in some cases for get as well, like in this particular case here, there are optional JSON parameters that you can specify. So here it's not required, that's why you see it as uh, optional. So uh, let's actually look at uh, one that has um, the JSON as, yeah, here, if you see here, there's no URL parameters here, but there's JSON parameters. Uh, and um, the, you can see here that the key name and the workflow API version, they're required. So they are, uh, the parameters are required in the JSON payload.
right? And there is no URL parameters required for this one. So it, it depends from uh, each of the API interaction routes. Um, you need to like uh, go and see like which one requires what. Um, and uh, some of them have um, URL parameters, some of them don't. Uh, and then sometimes there will be required ones as well. So let me go here. So if I look at this particular one, the difference is like you will see, um, you know, ID in curly braces. And this is where you actually have to specify the ID of the journey or a key. And you can see this is a required parameter in the UL parameters, just like how we saw the JSON uh, required ones for the payload. Um, you also can have required parameters for URL. Uh, in this particular case, it says either the ID or the key. You need to specify that for that specific journey for it for the API to go and retrieve that as well, okay? Um, so this is uh, very, very useful to like, you know, go um, and see like what are the different options that you can specify along with the API call. Now, if you want to get more details with the examples, uh, you can click on more detail uh, and it will open up um, a more specific um, a page with, with all the details and an example as well. Um, so once it loads, yeah, so you can see here the URL parameters, the JSON parameters that we saw earlier, and this is the best part. You have an uh, example uh, where it says, okay, if I want to like, you know, use this particular uh, get interaction, uh, v1 interactions, I can also specify a few additional URL parameters here, uh, and this is what a sample response would look like. So this is definitely something that you should probably look at first um, before you try out the actual APIs uh, to know what are the different options that you can work with uh, when calling the API. Okay, so now let's look at the SOAP API documentation. So uh, just below the REST API documentation, you can see the SOAP Web Service API as well. Uh, you can expand, definitely go through that. Now the important one that you need to know is the WSDL and the endpoint links. Uh, we will look at how to use the WSDL when we look at the SOAP uh, UI uh, video in future, uh, but primarily the URL that you will use for your SOAP API, uh, like I showed earlier, uh, you will have the tenant specific one, and you will see the difference mainly is the REST uh, SOAP and the auth one is also going to be auth.marketingcloudapis.com, right? So that's the primary difference between uh, the three of them. Uh, and for uh, the SOAP API, um, unlike the REST one, uh, it doesn't have routes. Um, all it has is that the tenant specific uh, URL uh, slash service.asmx. That's that's all you will need for the SOAP APIs. Um, so everything else will actually be specified in the XML body, right? Um, and then uh, you mainly for the SOAP API, you need to know the different methods here. Uh, so these are the various methods depending on what type of operation you're trying to do. Uh, and what are the objects that you can work with? There's quite a lot. Um, so you will need to know like, okay, which object uh, supports what feature uh, and which one do you need to use? Uh, for example, if I wanna like look at data extension, right? If I click on data extension here, it says the data extension object represents a data extension with an account. So if I want to like, you know, um, you know, work with a specific data extension in my marketing cloud org, um, and I wanna like get some uh, properties uh, about that, I can go here and see what are the different properties that are supported by the SOAP API. Okay, so you need to read through this and, and figure out like, okay, what's the status of it? Uh, if I need to know, okay, what's, uh, is it a sendable uh, or is it a testable one? What's the, the different fields, um, the description and all that? Uh, if there's a retention period specified, I can use all that uh, or get all that using the SOAP API. Now there's another um, similar one as well. You will see there's called something called data extension object. Okay, so you need you should be very, very careful and not confuse the two. The data extension object represents a row within a data extension. So if you want to like work with the data within a data extension, you need to use this particular object. Sometimes I know it's confusing, uh, but that's the way that it's named. Um, and then you need to also know which operation. For instance, like similar to a get, if I want to retrieve information, I need to use the retrieve operation um, and then uh, use the specific object that I need to work with, okay? Uh, in future videos, we will see like, you know, how to use the SOAP APIs um, um, you know, calls to, you know, work with a few of the common uh, use cases that, that we can use, okay? Now, there's also a supported operations for objects and methods. Um, if you scroll down to the documentation here, you'll see all the different API objects and then the mapping of the various, uh, you know, methods that are available. Um, now, I wouldn't uh, fully rely on this one because I think this is a slightly old one because um, I did find that, you know, there are a few uh, that are not updated when I tried that, like it was not showing as uh, retrieve available for a few things and I tried it out and it was working fine. Um, so I believe that some of the documentation may be slightly old or not updated. Um, so if you see that, you know, there's a particular um, uh, method that's missing for an API object, uh, you can still try it out and see if it works. If it works, great. Uh, so there's a little bit of trial and error that you might want to look at as well. 
So I hope you got a, a brief idea about the Marketing Cloud APIs and how to browse through the documentation for the same. Um, and in the next video, we will see how we can you know, set up the authentication and access for Marketing Cloud APIs by creating an install package in our org. Okay, thank you for watching.